My guest says she was touched by an angel long before she played one on television. Actress Roma Downey was the angel Monica in the popular TV series. I think many parents are going to be calling her an angel when they discover her new faith-based educational series just for preschoolers. It's called Little Angels, and we are going to be talking about it. Roma, you did not say goodbye to angels when you left the series, and no. you didn't say goodbye to your artistic gifting. Thank you. No, I have been touched by angels my whole life, and um, they've had such significance in my life, and it was such a privilege for me to have played one on television for almost 10 years. 200 episodes? Oh, my goodness, yes. It was a, it was a long but beautiful journey. And I understand Della Reese... Tess yes. has really been a mentor, a mother figure yeah, she's in a, your life? She's not a mother figure. She is my mother. Really? She has adopted me, and I have adopted her, and I'm so grateful to her. The relationship that you would have seen as Tess and Monica on screen is reflected very much in our off-screen love, which is true and real and strong. She has taught me so much. She has been such a source of inspiration and wisdom in my life. My, my mother died when I was a little girl, you, you know. You were just 10? I was only 10 years of age and Della's only daughter passed away while we were filming Touched by an Angel together. Mm -hmm. And not long after, she took me in her arms and she said, you know, baby, God is so amazing because I always knew he brought me into your life because you needed a mama. I just hadn't realized that he brought you into my life because I was going to need a baby girl. She said, will you be my baby? I said, yes. And she said, then I am your mama. And she has been my mother ever since. And when she met my husband, Mark Burnett, uh, they loved the Lakers. Della and her husband, Franklin, loved the Lakers games. And we went to a Lakers game and I was phoning her and said, she said, come meet me at the intermission. And I took Mark over to meet with her and it was so important to me that they would like each other. I was just falling in love with him. I wanted them to connect. And she took him in her arms. She's not a, she doesn't shake hands. She's an embracer. And she took him into her arms and she hugged him. And she whispers in his ear, she said, that is my baby girl, and if you hurt her, I will have you killed. <laughs> <laughs> well, she must have been pleased because she officiated at your wedding. Yes, yeah, she April did. 28, 2007, mm -hmm. and she's godmother to your daughter. She is. She's godmother to Riley, and I'll never forget in the church, she stood up with Riley. It was like a moment from the Lion King or something when they hold up the baby Simba, yeah. and she held up little infant Riley, and she said, as God puts breath in my body. I will always stand up for this child. And, you know, we just know that she has and that she will. She's extraordinary. She's true and she's loving and, you know, I'm, there's no safer place than in the, in the arms of Della Reese. I didn't realize how many things uh, you have continued to bring your artistic gifts to. And so much of it goes back to to a very difficult childhood. You've mentioned that your your mom died at 10. Your dad had six children to raise. Yeah. You were the youngest. I was the youngest of six, yeah. In Northern my, Ireland? Yeah, in Northern Ireland I was raised during the Troubles. And I was so close to my mom. It was like she was my whole world. So when she uh, died, it was like somebody turned the lights out, you know? And um, we were so grateful, really, to our faith. Um, at that time, the comfort that it brought us and, um, you know, knowing that we would see her again and, and uh, honestly, all through my life, feeling her with me, feeling her energy with me and um, my dad was such a good dad, he really did his best um, to raise us and um, he encouraged me when I was leaving high school to go off and to to spread my wings and to go in search of my dream. At that time, I was choosing to go to university college in England, so it took me away from home. And I was a bit anxious about leaving because I was the only one left at home with him. And he said, no, you must go. You must go and live your life. And, and I did. And when I was off at college, my father, too, got sick and, um, and subsequently passed away. The day before you got home. Yeah, it was just oh. such bad timing, such bad timing. He called me. I was on a payphone in the lodging house that I was living on, had a payphone in the hallway. 
and I spoke to him the night before I was due to fly back. And we live in a very damp climate mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland. So when I say that he was going to put up on the indoor clothesline to air, to air out the dampness, he said, I've put your yellow flannel sheets, your favourite ones, on the indoor line to air. I said, oh, that's great, Dad, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be home on a flight tomorrow. And when I woke up in the morning, the phone rang before I left, and one of my brothers said, come home on the same plane, but we thought you should know that Daddy's dead. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean he's dead? I just spoke to him on the phone. Anyway, I got back to Northern Ireland. I don't even remember getting driven to our house, but all I know is when I got back into our kitchen and opened our little kitchen door, there hanging on the indoor clothesline, airing, were my favorite yellow flannel sheets. Mm. And I just took them in my face and I breathed them in because it was the last loving act of kindness. His last hug. It was his last hug, you know, that right to the end he was doing something loving. He taught me everything I knew about kindness. He always said that they would know our faith by how we are with each other. And that if we stepped up and were kind and loving to each other, that that was a way we could demonstrate Christ through our lives. And you know, through my career, um, I have tried to make choices that would, that would be honoring to my Father, mm -hmm. and also to make choices that would be honoring to my Heavenly Father. And so, you know, it's been, as an actor or as a producer, mm -hmm. I've tried to do work that would be pleasing to God. And so it was such a privilege for me to be on Touch by an Angel because you know the central message of Touch by an Angel every week was that there is a God, that God loves you, that God wants to be part of your life, that God has a purpose for your life. And I got to deliver that message. It was just so amazing. We would take hands, Della and I, and we would pray before those scenes that there would be less of us and more of God. Well, I happened to watch it rerun last night and I twice heard in that program, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Mm -hmm. We need to know where you, surprisingly and not surprisingly, are taking us. You're a mom at heart. Yes. And uh, you're bringing angels right down to the level of children's understanding to teach them. Yes, well, I think that there's a great opportunity. Little preschoolers are like little sponges, aren't they? And the, the thoughts and the seeds that are planted in their minds and in their hearts, it's a great time for them to really start to understand the concept of God mm -hmm. and how loving and how wonderful the Creator is. And so, um, because of my love for angels, I thought this would be a great way to serve as a teacher. And the premise of the little angels are that they're painted on the nursery ceiling. There are eight little angel characters. And in this case, there are twins. The children in the home are twins, Alex and Zoe, and they're four years of age. And these eight little characters reside on the ceiling of their nursery, but they only come to life when the mom and dad aren't around. And they fly down and they serve as little teachers and guides and mentors to the children, teaching them good values, but also taking them into stories of the Bible in easy to understand ways for the preschool mind, teaching them a little bit about scripture. Oh, and you're about to see how appealing the animation is. Take a look at this. Wow, that's huge. What is it? An ark, a big boat. Why did God tell you to build it? Cause there's a flood a coming. <gasps> yeah, I know, I know. It hasn't rained in years, but I trust God. When he says something's gonna happen, you can believe it's gonna happen. He told me how to build this thing. Turned out pretty well, too, if I say so myself. <laughs> this has been so well thought out. Uh, there's a little Angel's Bible storybook, which yes. is just beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. It really brings the Bible to life in age-appropriate ways for our little ones. And when you go online, uh, you can download crafts and things to color. And Yeah, we have a great website at littleangels.com. If anybody's interested, they can see more about us there. Now, we need to see the angels. But well, first, here's, here's the web page, just so you know you found the right spot when you go online. Where again are we going for this? Littleangels.com. Littleangels.com. Can't forget that. There they come off the ceiling. And here's a little clip. Uh, angels in action.
It's all right, children. Come on out. Who, who are you? I'm Michael, the Archangel. And this is Gabriel, the Herald Archangel. Where did you come from? They came from the ceiling, Alex. <laughs> Close. We come from heaven, actually. Heaven? It's a little above your ceiling. Why are you so surprised? Didn't you believe your mommy and daddy? Mommy and daddy? You know the other two people who live in the house about so high? Tuck you in bed at night? Dita, front and center. Wow! I didn't think mommy and daddy meant you were for real. Of course they did. That's why they put us here. Right. So we'd be the first things you'd see when you wake up in the morning. And the last things you see before you go to sleep at night. These are Dina, the angel of learning, and Ariel, the guardian angel. And the rest, well, we'll meet them as we go. Wow, we have a very own little angels. Aren't they so cute? The and one's like Sherlock Holmes. Yes, they, we tried to come up with a variety of characters so that the kids would have somebody they could relate to. And that little angel of learning, Dina, she carries her little, it's like a little iPad. We wanted them to be relatable to the kids so that they would trust them. And, you know, they're so cute and lovely. And the lessons they're teaching are really important. ABCs and one, two, threes and colors and animals and shapes and, you know, all the things your, your little preschooler needs to know. Makes you want to start all over again. How old are your children? What? My, uh, we have three children. I have a 16-year-old um, daughter, Riley, and uh, Mark brings two beautiful boys to my life, Cameron, who's 15, and James, who's 19. So James is just off at college, and Cameron and Riley are at home. We have two, uh, two high schoolers, and it's just great. They're wonderful kids. They're, they, be, they were very supportive in everything. I was wondering, everything kind of an over-the-shoulder glance at yeah. all of these yeah. wonderful Riley fresh Riley, in projects. particular, you know, as a, as a daughter, was so thrilled with as the design started coming together for little angels and you know really everything was was very thought through well it's great to have the seal of approval too of mops you know what mops is mothers of preschoolers very respected organization haven't seen Elisa Morgan in years, but she got that one going. Yeah, and no, it's, it's fantastic because, you know, there's a lot of product out there for your kids. And, you know, how would you know what's the best thing to get? And when we got that mop seal of approval, I think moms appreciate that. They're busy. You're in there shopping. You don't often have a whole lot of time to figure out what you're buying. And when you see that seal of approval on there, you know that somebody's already gone ahead and made sure this is a good product for your kid. DVDs, CDs, books, and online activities. Um, You've been busy. I have been busy, but you know, I'm so grateful. I've, I'm at a time in my life where, you know, I have choice what, what to do, what, what I might do next, and, and this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in being part of something that's positive. More importantly, where I can, I'm interested in work that promotes the Word of God and shines the light of God, shines the light of the Lord, so. Heavenly, <laughs> Roma. Thank you for this Thank time, you. for all that you're doing. I was going to say for the kingdom, but for children everywhere. And, of course, the Bible series. Can't believe you did that in five months. You're just a, a little dynamo. Wow. You know, it's, hey, we do what we can. We were given gifts. We were given talents. And it's important that we use them and use them wisely. Just another little light about you, which is sweet. Roma, honoring your two grandmothers. One was Rose. Oh yes, my and name. And one was Mary. Yeah. Rose and Mary. Ro Ma. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that nice and very imaginative? I think. And then my own daughter Riley. My mother's name was Maureen O'Reilly, and I wanted to honor her memory as well. So, I um, I named my daughter Riley after my mom. It's been a joy to get to know you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me.